Well, he looks calm enough, doesn't he? How he's feeling, we'll maybe find out afterwards if he wins. But he seems to me he's just focusing on on the table. That's what on the balls in front of him and not the occasion. If he doesn't do it now, he'll wonder how, won't he? This is about as good a chance as you could ask for. He needs up to and including the pink for victory. the oldest qualifier since Steve Davis in 2010 and of course most importantly to stay on the tour three balls to go we hope you're enjoying this coverage what a climax to two scintillating days at the English Institute of Sport can he do it he's just come slightly wrong side of this blue this pink is gonna be a little tougher than he would have liked so this ball this ball is the one. He's been playing professional snooker for 32 years. This is one of the biggest shots of his life. And he's missed it, or has he? Has he missed it? Oh, wow, wow, wow. Can you believe that? Hearts in mouths. You have got to feel so, so sorry for him. It wasn't easy. It was mid-range. There was so much pressure on it. And the drama continues. We're wringing every drop out of Judgment Day Part 2. That was hard to believe. And then you thought he'd fluked it in the other pocket. It's going to be a black ball finish, isn't it? So here we are. Ten days of qualifying. Two Judgment Days. And the last match is down to the last ball, and it's going to be Joe Perry with the first crack at the black. And he's potted it, and it's Joe Perry who goes to the crucible. He's beaten his great friend. He's delighted to qualify. He'll be disappointed for Mark Davis, who had the chance. He had the shot at the pink. He was making the clearance. He didn't pot it. A pat on the shoulder from Joe Perry.